Hello everyone, Flurb here from Flurb's Robo Quartet, and today I'm going to be giving a tutorial about how I make learning tracks, and how you can make them too. In this tutorial, I'm going to be sharing my exact process for making a set of learning tracks from start to finish. This is the method I use, though I'm sure many steps of this process can be altered to suit your specific needs. For example, in this tutorial, I use Finale Notation software, but you could just as easily use MuseScore, Sibelius, or any number of other products. The main product I use to generate the voice tracks is Vocaloid, which in my opinion generates the best sounding and most realistic voices. It's a bit on the pricey side, and a great alternative to use is the Harmony Assistant. It's less expensive, very user-friendly, though the voices are noticeably more robotic. Still, great for making effective learning tracks. At the end of the day, these tracks are a tool to learn the notes and words on your own. The real work to make a song sound great all happens in rehearsal. So, let's get started. Today, I'm going to be working with a wonderful little chart from Joe Lyles called I'll Never Write a Love Song Anymore. It's a real beauty, and I can't wait to sing it with my quartet. The first thing I'll do is organizational. I'll make a little folder on my desktop and start putting everything in there, just to keep it all in one place. Now I got my sheet music in there, so let's open it up and put it on one side of the screen. Now I'm going to open up Finale, which is my software of choice for musical notation. Instead of just using the existing barbershop template, I created a template for TTBB files because it's important for this process that every part of it is on its own staff. I'll explain more later. Now I'm plugging in the file information, setting the key of B flat, and specifying that there is a pickup measure of three quarter notes or a dotted half note. Now we begin the process of plugging this bad boy in, note by note, with each part on a dedicated staff. I'm using the speedy entry method in Finale, but even still, this process is still pretty tedious. So to save you some time, I'm going to fast forward through this process a bit. Okay, I've input all the notes. Let's give it a little listen for quality control. Not bad. For really simple learning tracks, you could just stop here. But we want something a little better. It looks like there's an optional key change in this song, and I think I'd like to include it. So I'll change the key at measure 57, and change the notes at measure 56 to include that change. Let's hear what it sounds like, and check out the tag. Oh yeah, that's better. And what a great tag. I can't wait to actually sing this bad boy. Be sure to save your files regularly. I'm going to save it now. Finale is great, but there is no virtual singer in the program. That's where Vocaloid comes in. To save some time, I can take all these notes from Finale and import it into Vocaloid. To do that, I have to export it as a MIDI file, .midi. First, I'm going to check that the human playback is set to none. This simplifies the file by removing any interpretation, and I like simple. Next, we're going to export it as a MIDI file, with each instrument saved to separate tracks. That way, each part will have a dedicated track when we import it into Vocaloid. So let's check it out now. In Vocaloid, we're going to open up the MIDI file we just created using our favorite voice. Mine is Cyber Songman 2, but there are others that are available on the Vocaloid website. I have some style presets that I created, and I'll apply them to every voice. It's a little complicated to get into that right now, but basically it adds the color I want to create a distinct character to each voice, so the bass sounds a little different from the lead and so forth. Now, when we play it, we only hear a breath. That's because we haven't told Vocaloid what to sing. We have notes, but no lyrics. 
Let's get started on that now. You could write the lyrics directly into Vocaloid, but I find it easier to actually write out all the lyrics in a document, then copy and paste them into Vocaloid later. You have to do this for each part, so I'll start with the lead. This part is also pretty tedious, so I'll fast forward through this some. Vocaloid is a Japanese software, but it understands English pretty well. You may have to tweak the pronunciation of some of these words. I'm a little worried about the word different in the sheet music. It's two syllables in the chart, but I'll bet Vocaloid will pronounce it with three syllables, like different. We'll see soon enough. You'll notice I put some dashes by some of the words in here. That's how I tell Vocaloid that a single word is carried over two notes. You can also put dashes in the middle of words to tell Vocaloid that there's a move there. If Vocaloid doesn't pronounce a word the way you want it to, you may have to spell it phonetically. It's not great, but it's decent at figuring out what you mean. Okay, we've written out all the lyrics to this song in four parts. Now we can just copy and paste it into Vocaloid by pasting it to the first note of the song for every part. It'll take a minute or two to render, so let's take advantage of this time to save our work so far. Okay, rendering is complete, so let's hear what it sounds like. I've written many kinds of songs of sadness, joy, and love. Up and let them down and out, the moon and stars above. But things are all so different now, my heart. Oops. As I guessed, Vocaloid pronounced different with three syllables. We want two, so let's type that word directly into Vocaloid. You can see it offers two pronunciations, so we're going to go with the second one. That should be two syllables. Now we have to replace all the lyrics after that, so we can just copy and paste everything from there on into the file, and it should line up. Now that that's done, let's take a listen. Oh, so different now. Oh my heart. That's better. Let's follow along with the sheet music and see if we hear anything else. A song of love, my day has turned to night. No love, no love song anymore. That sounded great. I'm stretching out the timeline a little so we have a bit of silence after the track finishes. Now, I'd like to go through the song and add the interp changes that are marked in the sheet music. Again, this is just a tool to learn the notes and words, so it doesn't need to sound perfect, but it would be nice if the learning tracks more closely reflected the notation in the sheet music. So we're going to add the first fermata at measure 6, and using the pencil tool, we're going to edit the tempo of the note so that we linger on the note a little longer. The tempo of the song is set by default at 120 beats per minute, and I'm fine with that. So for the fermatas, I'll change it to 60 beats per minute, or maybe 40, so the robots will sing it a little longer. Then we'll return to the song back to 120 beats per minute after. I'm going to go through the whole song and make these changes, so let's skip through this a bit. Okay, I've added all the interp changes that were marked on the sheet music and adjusted the tag so it sounds a little better to me. Let's hear what it sounds like with those changes. Never be denied Till then there'll never be another I can long, long, long for I'll never song anymore. Anymore. anymore No love song, love song anymore Oh yeah that was delicious. I think I want the ni in any to last a little longer, but otherwise I'm real happy with the way that sounds. Let's make that change, save it, and export it. 
Now we'll do an audio mix down. Select multi-channel so that each part exports to an individual WAV file and save it in the folder we made earlier. I'll save it to a separate folder and call it V1 because we may go through other versions of the song and we can make other folders labeled V2 and so on. While that's saving, let's open up our digital audio workstation. I use Adobe Audition, but you can use whatever makes you happy. Audacity is a great free alternative. You can also do all the mixing within Vocaloid, but I like the level of control that Audition gives me. In fact, you could do this whole thing in Vocaloid. You don't really need anything else. But this is the process I use, and it works for me, so I wanted to share it with all of you today. Okay, once we've created a new multi-track project with Adobe Audition and saved it to our folder, it creates another folder in there. Now let's save and close everything we've used so far and move all these files into our new folder to clean it up a bit. I'll leave the sheet music in this main folder because that's where I want it, but I want everything else to go in here. Next, let's take all the files in our V1 folder we just made and drag them into Audition. Double click on one and we can see the waveform. Now for me, I like all of my individual tracks to be a single mono track instead of a stereo track since it looks a little cleaner and more manageable. I also like to normalize the audio so that all the peaks in the waveform are lined up. If I want to make things quieter or louder to match the interp of the song, I'll do that manually. But for now, I want everything uniform. Now that that's done, let's drag all these files into our workspace. I'll make a few minor adjustments to the file so that the waveforms all look about the same size. We're going to work on the full mix first, so let's tweak our balance and gain. Balance is left and right sound, so we're going to move the tenor and lead to the left and the berry and bass to the right to give it that three-dimensional sound. Tenor is furthest to the left, so I'll set that at negative 45 and lead about negative 15. Berry is furthest to the right, so I'll set that at positive 45 and the bass at positive 15. I want the lead to be the loudest, bass to be just a little quieter, and tenor and baritone even quieter. So I'll set the gain to tenor and berry at negative 3 decibels, lead at plus 1 decibel, and bass can stay right there at 0. The next thing I want to do is add a little vocal reverb. This makes it sound like it was actually sung in a space instead of just flat sound. Adobe has some decent presets you can use, and you can play with these if you want. For me, medium vocal reverb is fine for a ballad, so I'll apply that to each track. Okay, let's hear how that sounds. I've written many kinds of songs of sadness, joy, and love. Up and down, down and out, the moon and stars above. Things are all so different now. Oh yeah, that's a nice, full-bodied sound. Okay, let's export. I'll save it in our main folder for this project, and I'll label this one 05 Full Mix. That way, if you sort the folder alphabetically, the full mix will always appear fifth in the list. Now we're ready to make the part left tracks. For those tracks, we put the part you want to listen to on the left and all the other parts on the right. First, we need to make a tune-up chord. You could just record yourself blowing the pitch on a pitch pipe, or in Adobe, you can just generate a tone electronically, which works just fine. This song is in the key of B-flat, so let's set the pitch at the B-flat hertz value. Looks like B-flat is about 233.08 hertz, so that should be fine. Yep, that sounds good, but I want to smooth it out a little, so I'll drag these little doodads to have the tone fade in and fade out, so it's not so harsh. Okay, we're going to start with the tenor, so let's set the tenor part to the left side and the other three parts to the right. To get a good balance of sound, we'll have to make the side with only one part a lot louder. So we'll set that at plus three decibels, and each part on the other side will have to be a lot quieter, so it's more even. We'll keep the lead and the bass the loudest at 
negative 2 and negative 3 respectively, and we'll lower the baritone all the way to negative 6. That should do it. Let's take a listen. I've written many kinds of songs. Yep, those levels sound pretty even, so we're ready to export. I'll label this as 01 tenor left, so it appears first in the list when you sort it alphabetically, and people know it's the part left file when they look at it. But obviously, you can label it whatever you want. And we'll do that for every part. Make whatever adjustments you need to get the balance right, but I always have the lead and the bass louder than the other parts, so it's easier to key off of them. And that's that. Be sure to save all your files. You never know if you'll want to return to this project later on. You can fiddle with the metadata if you want. I like to have this info embedded in the track so it displays properly when you're playing it on a mobile device. And so if it's shared, people know where you got it from. And there you go, a full set of part left learning tracks. This took me about an hour from start to finish, though not all of the projects you work on will be this easy. The toughest projects take a few hours and each piece of software I'm using costs a few hundred dollars, so you'll have to evaluate for yourself whether this process is worth it. While these tracks are perfectly accurate, they are the absolute worst tracks that are commercially available, and if you have the money, you're much better off going with one of the many professional track makers out there. It's way better to have tracks that are actually fun to sing with and help reinforce good singing practices, making you a better singer. But if you just want something quick and dirty to help you work on the notes and words outside of rehearsal, then these tracks are a great resource. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. Please feel free to share this video with anyone who might find it useful. Thank you for watching and happy learning. Oh